That was not in your script, Bob. I, I tell you, I admire Bob so much and trust him so much, and I'll tell you how much I trust him. He's also a pilot, and a great pilot, but recently he blew me out to Asheville for a meeting, and I kept sitting in the plane thinking, I trust Bob, I trust Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so now, really good? Well, it's great to see everyone. Uh, it's great to see everyone. Thank you so much for making a commitment to this. Lou and Senate, your remarkable leaders. We're grateful for your commitment to this and to the panel and presenters. This is an exciting time for us. Uh, the North Carolina News Group Project, as Bob said, really is sort of a servant to a lot of interests. And one of the things that we have to serve are people who have expertise that we do not, who have working in vineyards where we have not, and figure out how do we collaborate around ways that will help uh, move our state forward in, in a deeply collaborative and focused uh, I want to also thank Richard Triangle Regional Partnership and Charles Hayes for hosting us today. Charles is out of the country, but again, grateful for uh, the opportunity to be here. So our vision is focused around the notion that every child graduates, every child graduates ready, uh, ready for college, ready for careers, and ready for life. It's very common to hear that phrase these days no matter where you travel around the country. I think it says a lot about the moment that we're in as Americans and as North Carolinians. From our perspective, that notion is about an authentic education. What does it mean, not just a graduated child, but a graduated child who has a sense of mission, purpose, and connection to a future that really matters? Many of us in this room, probably all of us in this room, have been around young people who don't have that sense of purpose and sense of mission, and we've seen the drift that can happen in their lives, and it's heartbreaking when young people get off track because they don't really have that embedded in their experience as they're coming through an educational system. And the evidence is getting clearer and clearer that as students master uh, the courses, the rigorous courses to leave the college and have an experience that connects them to a career, they're far more likely to persist and far more likely to succeed in their lives. Last week, North Carolina was recognized in a national report because of the state's significant accomplishment in moving its graduation rate uh, significantly higher over the last 10 years. In fact, more than 10 points over that last 10 years. And many schools in our state now have a graduation rate exceeding 95%. So often the popular media and certainly the current economic climate doesn't lend itself to praising the teachers and principals and district leaders who get those kinds of results. We should be awfully proud of their hard work. We should also be proud of the commitment that our community college and university systems have made with the Department of Public Construction and the State Board of Education to make our state the leading state in the United States in the development of early college high schools. Those schools are getting remarkable results, and one out of three of those early colleges are right here in North Carolina. Something great to celebrate. Many partners are working together on deep and authentic designs around STEM education, around transforming middle schools and high schools and the creation of career academies, and the list goes on and on and on. We have a great deal to celebrate. This moment, today, we're here to ask experts to help guide our thinking around the notion between connecting secondary school innovation to workforce development. It's not our core competency, quite frankly. That's not where we live and breathe, but others do. And we're seeking the opportunity to collaborate with others and learn from your experiences. Um, let me um, thank just a couple of people before we go ahead and get started this morning. I wanted to make a special mention of Nancy Hoffman. Is Nancy arrived? She's not arrived. She's been texting me all night as she's been coming through the airport. She didn't really sleep. Nancy's just released a new book that I would refer to all of you called uh, Schooling in the Workplace. Our team is using this book as a guide to look at the international benchmarks for really exceptional work in career and technical education and how those strategies are connected in post-secondary institutions. So thanks to Nancy. Thanks to my friend Bill Taylor who flew in. Uh, this morning as well. We built got this as close to your gate as the law will allow. And we can't really get uh, any closer. Um, I also want to mention my friend, uh, somewhat of a new friend, Joanne Honeycutt, who leads career and technical education with the Department of Public Instruction. She has quickly become a mentor and a guide for our organization as we carve a path in looking uh, at workforce development strategies. Finally, I want to thank uh, Ted Abernathy in the back. Ted, please wave. Um, Ted is an Eisenhower Fellow, and I've gotten to know and admire him greatly over the last few years. Uh, he is today preparing a report that will summarize the findings that will come back to the panel for your observations before we issue a final report on what we've learned in this session. Let me again thank everyone for their commitment and involvement today. Uh, sent with your permission, we're going to begin with a very brief video, and then we're going to turn it over to Sophie Frankowski, who is, I think, one of North Carolina's master, master teachers. 